Welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is the short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant for my Distributed Systems and Blockchain lecture here at the Eastern University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. I mentioned last week that a new HBO documentary will try to speculate about who Satoshi Nakamoto is and it has aired and it claims that Canadian developer Peter Todd, this guy here, is Satoshi Nakamoto, the mysterious creator of Bitcoin. The filmmaker presents some evidence and confronts Todd, who appears to admit to being Satoshi in the film. However, Todd is known to make such claims in solidarity with Satoshi's privacy and he has denied being the Bitcoin creator in other communications. Interestingly, prior to the documentary's release, prediction markets had identified the late Len Sassman as the favorite to be named Satoshi Nakamoto. This speculation about the documentary speculation turned out to be incorrect. The discrepancy between the prediction market's expectation and the actual outcome shows the unpredictable nature of such high-profile investigations and the ongoing mystery around Satoshi's true identity. Despite the new claims in this documentary, experts in the Bitcoin community continue to express doubt about Todd being Satoshi, including Todd himself. Nevertheless, Peter Todd is a well-known Bitcoin core developer as well as a known figure in the Bitcoin ecosystem. The next article is about market making in the CeFi world. CeFi, as we learned in the lecture, is the mix of cryptocurrencies and sort of traditional financial intermediaries. And in our lecture, we saw the advantages of DeFi with the ultimate market maker. Well, in CeFi, you need to do it manually, which is prone to faults and price manipulations, as we see in this article here. So what happened? Well, the FBI secretly created an Ethereum-based token called Next Fund AI as part of an undercover investigation into crypto market manipulation schemes. The agency revealed in October 2024. The operation aimed to expose price manipulation, such as pump and dump schemes. Through the use of cooperating witnesses, the FBI launched a token and conducted investigation without the knowledge of the market participants. As a result, the Securities and Exchange Commission charged three market makers and nine individuals with boosting the price of specified crypto assets, while the Department of Justice charged 18 people and entities with widespread fraud and market manipulation. The investigation revealed that defendants used wash trade to create the illusion of active trading and misled investors about the value of their tokens. Notably, companies like ZMQuant, CLS Global and MyTrade, unaware that NextFund AI was controlled by the FBI, engaged in illegal trading practices. The Department of Justice has recovered 25 million in fraudulent proceeds, which will be returned to investors. This case highlights a new twist on traditional financial crimes with cryptocurrency as a medium. In DeFi, there are other manipulation issues you need to be aware of, such as minor extracted value or front running. So DeFi will not solve these fraud issues, but at least everything is on chain and transparent. The next article is about getting root access with a lighter. That sounds very interesting, but you need full access to your hardware, which would make other attacks much easier. It's the following article here. And in this article, the author explores an interesting concept, fault injection. Using a regular cigarette lighter for triggering hardware faults, fault injection, involves inducing errors in hardware to exploit vulnerabilities 
and the author demonstrates how a piezoelectric lighter can create electromagnetic interference that corrupts memory operations. And he details how he modified an old laptop with a wire soldered to the data bus of its memory module using the lighter electromagnetic pulse to consistently induce memory errors. And he then used these glitches to exploit bit flips in CPython, successfully gaining unauthorized control over the memory. And the author escalated the attack to a more sophisticated level by targeting Linux memory management. And he crafted an exploit to bypass virtual memory and page table protection, granting him root access on the machine. Although he acknowledges that this was a proof of concept since he already had root on his laptop, his work highlights the potential for low cost tools like a piezoelectric lighter to undermine modern hardware protection. He sees practical applications for such techniques in bypassing anti-cheat software or gaming restrictions and poses several open questions about the feasibility of applying this technique to newer hardware or platforms like RM or Nintendo Switch. The last article is about FTX, how customers from the failed crypto exchange gets reimbursed in the following article here. A federal bankruptcy judge has approved FTX reorganization plan nearly two years after the cryptocurrency exchanges collapse. Remarkably, according to court approved plan, 89% of FTX creditors will receive 119% of their claim amount as of November 2022, when FTX filed for bankruptcy protection. This unexpected outcome is partly due to the significant increase in Bitcoin value. It's up 260% since FTX failure and successful asset sales, including a stake in AI startup Anthropic, the maker of Cloud AI. In the bankruptcy process, the company has collected between 14.7 billion and 16.5 billion worth of property for distribution surpassing the estimated 11.2 billion owned to creditors. And this positive turn is in contrast to the fate of FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried, who was convicted of seven criminal counts related to stealing billions from FTX customers and sentenced to 25 years in prison. The bankruptcy estate is now finalizing arrangements for worldwide distributions to creditors. However, keep in mind that people are making 19% interest on the value of Bitcoin and other currencies such as Sol at the value of 2022. And Bitcoin back was around 20,000 US dollars and now in 2024 it's more than 60,000 US dollars. So it's not really a 19% profit. So that's it for this week. See you next week.